Today we went to Melbourne and we heard some signs with us. We were together with a crowd of people. My sign was so, so good that people came and took photos and I've put them on Facebook. That's how much they liked it. Okay, now back to how it looked. It had windmills, sun, electricity, car, bicycle, and a green chick for that. And we had um, some metal to put it, stick it onto so, so we could hold it up. Well, there were some bad things about it. Like, there, came, there was rain, there was hard wind. The wind almost blew my sign away. Lucky I hold it tight. What are we gonna do? Hey, hey, ho, ho. Coffee, gas, is got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Coffee, gas, is got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Some people talk about what's happening and what we need to do better. It was quite long there. What we are against is producing new coal products that we know have high greenhouse emissions for export to countries that are traditionally highly polluting. My family and community do not believe that these new coal industries are the way forward for anybody in this country. You cannot eat coal. You can't repair an environment that is contaminated with toxic chemicals and you can't place a price on a child's life that has been lost to leukaemia. Please help us ban this devastating new coal industry. Support us by locking the gate to the mining companies and give the government the clear message that coal seam gas and new dirty coal industries are unacceptable in this country. We are here today to celebrate the strength of community, the strength of people coming together from the country to the city and everywhere in between. Our strength lies in our solidarity because we stand together, united in protecting the things most precious to us. Our water, our food security, our environment, our health and our children's future. We are here to say the things we seek to protect from new coal and unconventional gas mining are worth fighting for. And we will not back down. These proposed coal and gas developments, if allowed to go ahead, will cripple rural communities whilst putting at risk our most valuable commodity, water. We've seen vibrant communities in New South Wales and Queensland turned into industrial landscapes covered by gas pipelines, compression stations, toxic evaporation ponds, access roads and gas wells as far as the eye can see. We've seen productive farmland consumed by open cut coal mines and the health of communities put at risk by coal dust. What we are experiencing is a last ditch attempt by an industry driven solely by greed to extract every last fossil fuel resource in this country. Well, today we're here to declare that some things are more important than money. To declare that there is no social license here to be carelessly risking our food security, our precious water, our local jobs and our environment for an industry that runs on indifference and greed. We'd just like to interview Gina here. I want your farm. You want our farm, you're not getting our farm. I, I need another $22 billion. Well, we're not giving you, what do you need that for? So I can poison your children. Oh, well, you know, we're not going to let you poison our children. But that's what I want. I need a lot of money so I can fill up a swimming pool and swim in it. <laughs> I don't care about the future. I just want my money now. Because you realise you have to pay your children a lot of money out soon. Oh well. I can just if they want to hate me they can take a ticket and stand in line. I talked to some people and 
they said some long sentences and some smart sentences. Well, I'm Alex, I'm running for government because my grandson lives with me. How old are you, Alex? Eight. Oh, he's eight too. He plays soccer and tennis. And I've got involved with his primary school and his sporting clubs. And I've got to know all his friends. And I'm just freaked out about the country that they are going to inherit. And also, Alex, when you've got common sense on your sign here, I'm a builder. And our building works, it deals with what works and what doesn't work. And for building, you've got to have common sense, logic and safety. And I've measured the coal seam gas industry against that yardstick and it fails terribly on every count. So that's why I'm running. Because there's no common sense to it and because I'm very concerned about my grandson's generation, which includes you. Because one day you might be playing soccer together. So there comes a time when the political process has to stop and there comes a time when you've really got to stand up and you've got to lock up and you've got to pull down and you've got to confront these industries that will kill you and your children. They think they'll get away with it because they've got money. But money doesn't isolate you from climate change and the death of the planet. These people are stupid, they're ignorant and they're committing crimes against humanity. would be in jail for the damage they've done already, let alone the damage they will inflict in the future. Recently we hit 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere and that guarantees that the world will be at least two degrees warmer by 2030, 2040 and beyond that uh, the world will become uninhabitable to, for, uninhabitable for people and animals and plants and all sorts of things. So these people who are fracking for gas, who are digging up coal, who are transporting and who are burning it are committing crimes against humanity. These are crimes against humanity and our political system and our legal system should hold these people to account. These people should be in jail for the damage they cause to our generation and the generations to come. We're going to live on a dead planet because these people are unconstrained. And we have democratic movements in this country and around the world who are demanding that they are free of these people and the damage they do and our parliaments and our legal systems support them. So shame on them all. They should all be in jail and we must now get involved in direct action. We have to pull these people down, we have to pull their rigs down, we've got to stop them digging, stop them drilling, we've got to save the planet because nobody else will. We need all parties to commit to significant investment in renewable energy to secure a safe and clean future for all Victorians, to protect jobs in manufacturing, agriculture and tourism and to allow our communities to be heavily involved in a consultation process that currently does not exist. And the message we send to you today is make no mistake, you ignore us at your peril. I look around at all of you here today who are inspirational and brave courageous and determined and I know that together no matter how long the battle that we will and we can protect all the things that these industries put at risk. I will end by leaving you with a quote from the inspirational Drew Hutton. When our leaders fail us then ordinary people have got to become heroes. By the end of the day I felt good because I, I had a good day holding my sign up, even though it was a little bit hard, it was a little bit, like, heavy. But what I felt most good about is that if we all understand this, we can do it. But sometimes it's just that people won't stop using that coal burning because they get money. But money isn't as important as our environment.
and making the feel for the environment for us, for the animals, for any living creature. If we don't stop doing that smoke thing, the world will, will break, we'll die like the dinosaurs. If it was that way, like there will be nothing to eat, the, the animals will die, we will die because there's nothing to eat, because the farms can't grow, the fruit can't grow, there's no animals to eat. Then it's like just game over if we don't just stop it and turn around on the good side using wind power, sun power or paddling power. <laughs>